Hello, and welcome to our Lenten Storytime series. Our series is called Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, and each week we are looking at a story in Jesus' life and thinking about what it means for our lives and our relationship with God. I hope you have your materials ready. As in weeks before, we have some rocks here. You can see that I have three rocks out here representing the three weeks in Lent that have already gone by, and I have three gathered here to represent the weeks we have left. And the same with my candles over here. I have three candles lit and three that have been blown out. I also have a fan with me today. This is one of the fans we use to keep our air safe here during worship on Sunday mornings. And I'm going to use it today to explain part of the story. So keep your eye out. If you have a little fan or I guess a fan this large in your house, you could find it and be near it for that part of the video. So let us begin as we've done in weeks past by taking a few deep breaths together. Let's breathe in and let it out. Let's come very intentionally to this time and see what we can learn. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, God incarnate, Messiah, prophet, and savior. You call us to walk in your ways. Gather each one of us in today. Connect us even as we are far away from each other. Help us to learn more about you today so that we might share with one another your grace. In your name we pray. Amen. So here in Kansas, it often gets windy. I probably don't have to tell you that. We had a lot of wind this week. The other day, it was so windy that my trash cans kept falling over and my welcome mat kept blowing away. I wonder, do you like the wind? Do you like the feel of it against your skin? I think it's pretty cool to watch what the wind does to things, the trees blowing in the breeze, or when the clouds move very quickly across the sky. I think that's a pretty amazing thing, that wind, something we can't really see can impact so much in our environment. In this story, Jesus compares the Spirit of God to the wind, which is why we have our fan here today. I'm going to turn the fan on right when he says that, and you can do it too. Today I'll be reading parts of John chapter 3. This is a pretty famous passage in the Bible and has one of the most famous verses. Keep your ears open for it. But it's a little confusing, but don't worry, we'll talk about some of the metaphors, the figures of speech that Jesus uses and try to work through them together. This story is unique to the book of John. It's not found in any other gospel, but you can find it summarized in page, on page 189 of your Shine Bible, which might be helpful sometime after watching this video to go back and look at it for a review. So I'm just going to read portions of it today. So I am going to turn in my Bible to John 3, and John is in the New Testament, so that's near, a little closer to the back. And in John 3, it says, there was a man named Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees. He was an important Jewish leader. One night he came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we know you are a teacher sent from God. No one can do these miraculous signs that you do unless they have God's help. Jesus answered, I assure you, everyone must be born again. Anyone who is not born again cannot be in God's kingdom. Nicodemus said, How can a man who is already old be born again? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? Jesus answered, Believe me when I say that everyone must be born from water and the Spirit. Anyone who is not born from water and the Spirit cannot enter God's kingdom. The only life people get from their human parents is physical, but the new life that the Spirit gives a person is spiritual. Don't be surprised that I told you you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. You hear it, but you don't know where it is coming from or where it is going. It is the same with everyone who is born from the Spirit. Did you hear the part about the wind? 
The Spirit of God is like the wind. We can't hear it, we can't see it, but we can see how it affects the things around us. So let's, let's try it with this fan. So I'm going to grab a piece of our wheat here from our worship table display. And I'm going to turn our fan on. We're going to watch what it does. You can kind of see how this fan makes this piece of wheat kind of move in the breeze. And I can feel the change in temperature that the fan is making. It feels a little cooler. And maybe you can hear over my microphone how the fan is making noise. So wind is something that we can't see. We can't touch it, but it's there. We know it's there because we see what it does. And the Spirit of God is like that. Jesus really likes to explain complex things with very everyday things. So Jesus tells Nicodemus that everyone must be born again. Jesus doesn't mean we literally need to, be, need to become babies again. Jesus means that we need to let God's Spirit change us. We need to learn new ways of living, caring for one another, and standing up for those who have less power than we do. In the next part of John 3, Jesus says some of the most famous words in all of the Bible, like I mentioned before. In trying to explain things to Nicodemus, he says, Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him would not be lost but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world. He did not send him to judge the world guilty, but to save the world through him. People who believe in God's son are not judged guilty, but those who do not believe are already judged because they have not believed in God's only son. During Lent, we've learned a few things so far, right? We've learned that Jesus is God incarnate, God in human flesh. Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one. And that Jesus is a prophet. In this passage, God's son is the term used to refer to Jesus. But there's also a bigger word that describes everything that Jesus is in this passage. Jesus is our savior. Savior is a word we use to describe someone who saves us from danger. But what danger does Jesus save us from? Jesus saves us from something called sin. Sin, in the most basic sense, is failure to do what is right. In a more robust sense, in a bigger sense, it's actions that hurt our relationship with one another and our relationships with God. And even sometimes our relationships with ourselves. Maybe you remember a time that you lied and you were caught in that lie. How did that feel? How did the person you lied to feel about it? Sin is more complicated even than that, though. It's more complicated than what we individually do to one another. Sin is also about our whole world. Because people are not always good about caring for each other, there are systems all over our world that cause pain. Jesus came to save us not just from our individual sins, our tendency to lie or to be selfish, but also the sins that impact our whole world. Systems that keep people from having food or shelter. Systems that keep people from having adequate care for what they need. But this is a little harder to see, right? It's, it's a little harder to, decide, to see all that in the world. Sometimes it's hidden on purpose. So it's very tricky, sin. And the Spirit of God, which Jesus sent to guide us, is more like the wind moving than a flashing sign that says, do not sin, this is sin. So it can be a little hard sometimes to discern what is right and wrong. But I promise, it is possible because we can still feel the wind, right? Even when we can't see it. 
so too we can feel the Spirit of God moving even when we can't see exactly the right path. And the Spirit of God will guide us. So this week, I invite you to do a little activity. Wait for a windy day. Hopefully you won't have to wait long since this is Kansas. And stand out in the wind. And maybe close your eyes and think about what God might be telling you. What God's Spirit might be saying to you. What might God's Spirit be calling you to do? What might God's Spirit be calling you not to do? Maybe there's something you've been doing that isn't so good and you want to stop. Write down what you think of so you can remember and maybe share it with somebody so you can talk about it. Know that God's Spirit is moving even when you can't see it. Know that Jesus is here to save us from the sin that we do individually and the sins of this whole world. It's pretty amazing. Now let's close with a quick ritual. If you have your candles, you can blow one out so that only two are lit now. You see our two. And if you have your rocks, you can take one and put it with the others. So now we have four here and two here. This is our continual emptying for Lent. And let us finish by taking a breath in together and letting it out. And join me in prayer. God, who came to earth in human flesh, you save us, calling the world away from sin. Shape our hearts so that we might live lives that honor you. God, be in my head and in my understanding. God, be in my eyes and in my looking. God, be in my mouth and in my speaking. God, be in my heart and in my thinking. God, be at my end and at my departing. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me. Be sure to check back next week to meet me here again virtually on the top of the sanctuary stairs, and we'll have another story about the life of Jesus. Take care. Listen. And be on the lookout for God's Spirit. And God bless.